Hi everybody, how's it going? I am Q at the Geek, and this is Shenzhen IO in real life. Part one, the plan. Okay, so for a quick introduction, this is Shenzhen IO. Uh, it's a game where you play as an embedded systems engineer and you solve puzzles using assembly language and microcontrollers. The reason this drew me to it is because I am an embedded systems engineer and I thought it would be fun. So I had this idea to take the first project of the game, the first puzzle, which is a fake security camera, and make it in real life. Go through my process of what I do to actually develop circuit boards and write firmware. And so we're going to go through and uh, in this part, we're going to talk about how we're going to accomplish all of that. Um, we're going to talk about a quick schematic that we're going to sketch up. We're going to mock up a quick 3D enclosure. And we're going to talk briefly about how we're going to accomplish this through firmware. Um, the next episodes, uh, episode two is going to be actually creating that schematic and creating the board. Episode 3 is going to be doing the 3D modeling uh, for the mechanical enclosure. Episode 4, we're going to handle the firmware. And episode 5, we're going to bring everything together. I'm actually going to fabricate all of these things. Uh, I'm going to order professional boards from China. And um, I'm going to 3D print the enclosure. I'm going to go through and build everything up and show you how this entire project would work. So to start off, Let's go through the actual puzzle. Okay, so this is where we start out. So you can see the, the first attempt here from somebody who is starting the project. Um, they've got the first portion, which is blinking this red LED. So all we're going to be doing for this project is we're going to be blinking two LEDs off and on. This first LED follows this pattern here, so it's going to be off. It's going to turn on for a set period of time turn off again and turn back on. It's going to be periodic and it's just going to repeat. This second one, the one that we're going to write the code for, is for this blue LED and that's supposed to be a network LED so it looks like it has an internet connection to give it a little bit more realism. So you'll see here it turns on off for a shorter period of time. It's going to turn on for about two counts, turn off, turn back on, turn off again. And then because of how this is offset, it's going to be blinking out of synchronization with the red LED. So it's going to be a little harder to deter determine that it's still a set pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the MC4000 here and drop it in right below. We're going to draw a trace and connect it to this output and we're going to start writing our firmware. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move zero or off to P0. That's going to give us an initial condition that we'll be coming back to. Um, and now we're going to sleep for four counts. Next, we're going to move 100 or an on signal to P0. We're going to sleep for two counts and leave it on for two counts. And then we're going to move zero to P0 to turn it back off sleep for one count and move 100 to P0 P0 and then we are going to sleep for one count okay so as you can see this is running the way we expect it to we got this one blinking off and on and this one's giving us our sporadic pattern that makes it look like it's our network signal so Everything works there. Now let's move on and look at the schematic and how we're actually going to do this. Okay, to start out, the first thing we're going to get is our uh, microcontroller here. So we're just going to draw this down. Microcontroller. Okay, so um, that's going to be the main brain of our project. And then we're going to have some capacitors here. These are going to just help with power um, to keep it buffered and clean so that there's no issues that way. Um, and we'll just get these on here. And we're going to power this off of a standard coin cell battery, uh, which is going to be the CR 
2032. And that's going to be our ground rail right there. Okay, <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to grab our LEDs. We're going to have some resistors here that are going to help with current limiting so that the LEDs themselves don't uh, get fried. And so we've got the two LEDs. We're going to have our red and our, our blue. Um, and we'll connect these down to ground. So next we're going to have our crystal for timing, which uh, it's not exactly needed because you can run the microcontroller off of an internal crystal, uh, an internal oscillator, but uh, I like to have a crystal just to make sure I can control the timing. And I'm going to use a resonator so it actually has capacitance built in. And there we go. Um, the final thing we're going to do is we're going to bring out our our lines for programming and put those into a header block so that we can program the whole thing. And that's pretty much it. It's going to be a, a pretty straightforward design. Um, there's not going to be a whole lot otherwise. We might throw in a few other small discrete parts um, and we'll worry about values and everything here in a, a little while uh, when we actually get into that in the next episode. But for right now, I think that's going to be good enough to get us started. Okay, so for the first thing, um, we're going to go ahead and sketch out our box. I'm not that big of an artist, so forgive my crudeness. Um, I'm just going to have this, something like that. Um, and then we will have a lens up here. And do something like this. It's not actually going to have anything in it. We're just going to kind of make it look like it does. Uh, we'll have our LEDs down here. In the next part, we're going to have maybe just a little door here that will uh, go into, slide into the back that will help us have access to the PCB, but keep it covered at the same time. Um, and then we'll have some sort of mounting system maybe just uh, some plate that will come off here to a stand, something like that. Um, so again, we'll explore this more in episode three, but for right now, this should give us some general idea of what we're gonna do. So we're going to explore the firmware in episode three, but uh, for some quick pseudocode, just a general idea, uh, we're gonna have let's call this LED on and we're just going to link that for one second and then for LED let's call this net for our network we are going to make sure that's second so we can understand that um, for our network LED we're going to blink um, probably using some random pattern, so using some random integer that we're going to pull between, um, probably from somewhere between 100 milliseconds to one second. And I think that should be pretty good for us. There's not going to be a ton with this that we're going to have to worry about, um, other than when we do get to this randomizing portion. Um, but the firmware should go fairly quick. This isn't really that difficult of a, a project. Um, and as you saw earlier, the, the firmware in assembly was pretty straightforward. And when we're going to be using what I like to call Arduino C, um, that shouldn't take us too long at all to really get this written up. We will explore that further in episode four. All right. So that's pretty much it. As far as it goes, that should be fairly straightforward. Um, and so over the course of the next several episodes, we're going to go through and design the board. We're going to go through and design the box. We're going to write the code and we're going to do the assembly. Um, so stay tuned for the future episodes coming out here. And as always, if you like the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, then go ahead and hit the thumbs down. But tell me in the comment section below what you didn't like about it or maybe what you did. 
so that I can keep going and progress and make these videos better. Uh, make sure to subscribe so you can know when the next videos come out and hit the bell so that you're notified as soon as it gets uploaded. Thank you for joining me and we'll see you in the next one.